Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's still water tutorial. What you see in the vise is a fly I call the black damsel. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire hook and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, it's the E04, it's at A toe and as you can see it's a red thread. First thing I want to do is get a good bit of wax onto my thread and then rub my hands through it just to make sure that I haven't got a lot of residue on the thread. I'm going to start just in behind the eye and run a bit of thread up the shank of the hook to just beyond the point. So where a barb would be on a normal barbed hook really. Now I'm going to have quite a long marabou tail on this fly so what I like to do if you watch my videos you'll know I like to build a little rugby ball shaped lump at the back and the reason for this and I will explain it again if this is your first visit is with the long marabou tailed flies the marabou's got a tendency to wrap around the shank if you don't do this so this just helps to stop that now I'm going to be taking a photograph of this fly later so I'm going to just add a little bit of UV resin to the bump usually I wouldn't bother but as it's going to be photographed for the thumbnail I thought I would just make sure it's as neat as I can make it so just cure that off you don't have to do it but I just like it's just a bit pernickety really and um, so I'm going to add the tail I'm going to be using comp candy marabou and this is the blackjack I've already got a feather here I've been working with and how do I judge the amount to take? So what I do is I take from my thumbnail to my thumb knuckle. And that means if I'm tying up a lot of flies, I can get that consistency so they're all the same. So rip it away. Lost some of it there, but I've picked it back up. And you want to get rid of this. So the best way of doing that put a little twist in the marabou and then just snip it away. Now I want this to be tied in on top of the shank and the length of the shank. So I'm going to catch it just at the nose there and run my thread all the way back to my little rugby ball which you see just under the tail. Now you can leave this tail as is or if you intend to fish competitions Come with your thumb and forefinger and just remove that excess. It's always worth um, putting the finished fly wet into the gauge if the uh, competition is your game. You don't want to be caught out on the water. So I've just wet my thumb and forefinger to dampen down that marabou, keep it all nice and slicked back. That probably is a little long actually looking at it. And next I'm going to add in my rib. This is from Durham Ranger Fly Tying and it's simply a, a very thin blue holographic rib. And I've got a little bit here which I'll just catch in at the base of the fly. And then I can run back my thread. Now the body, I'm going to be using some of Troutline's Plus Squirrel Dubbing. This is pure black. And again, I've already got a little pinch already. It dubs dead easy, this. Easy to dub and it'll give me a nice tight body while still producing some little fibers that'll stick out for me. Now, you, the, the fly might seem a little familiar to you and that's because uh, I tied this after Ronnie Christie gave me his damsel pattern. And I thought, oh, I wonder if it would work in black. And there was quite a lot of messing around getting the right body and, and foil and stuff and, and the thread colour. But in the end, 
uh, and it's worked out really well. This fly's caught me a lot of fish over the years. So I'm going to bring that up and then I've obviously got too much dubbing. I can strip that away and return it to the packet. Pull it back. Just got a wee bit of excess there I don't want. Then next you can bring your rib over the top and you want it to be approximately three, three millimetres apart on your turns and bring it all the way up to the head and then lock that in. Two turns to lock it in and I always put two turns in front of the material I'm tying in. The reason for that is if you, you put a couple of locking turns in front of the material when you snip away there's no chance that the thread will back off and your rib will spring back. So that just holds that into place. So the hackle at the front, I'm using some of this. Now what it is, there's no label on it because I've had it for absolutely donkey's years. It's um, partridge feather that's been dyed blue. Now all the good ones are used, I've got just rubbish in here if I'm perfectly honest, but I've managed to pick out the best of them, which was this one, and I've already stripped away the bottom there. Now I'm going to catch in the tip with my hackle pliers and pull back the feather. Now if this will sit for me you'll notice that there's a bend in the feather. Now I want that bend to be tied in down because I want the feathers to slick back over the fly. Just getting that stray thread. It's just worth a little bit of wax at the front here to catch that tip. So again, a couple of locking turns, a couple of turns in front. You're then free to come in with your snips take away that tag. Then I'm going to use my hackle pliers. If you've got a good feather and uh, it's got a better stock you can get away with uh, not worrying about hackle pliers but I like to use mine. So I'm going to bring it up over the top of the head, slick the feathers back, just encourage them to go over. Then same again, one more turn will do me. Just encourage the feathers backwards and catch that into place. So your hackle pliers come to meet your thread. Now again, I always like to get a couple of turns in while I've still got control and then I can remove my hackle pliers. Wet my thumb and forefinger in my left hand. Slick it all back out the way then you can start to build your head. Once you've got the start of a head in place, you can then find your stock, keep in tension on your thread, and just pull that waste piece away. And that's looking mighty fine. Okay, so now I want to just finish off by building a nice in proportion head. Now I've tried this with all manner of different coloured threads and I always come back to red. It just works. So save yourself some time. Don't bother experimenting over the years I've done that for you. Red's the way ahead with this fly pattern anyway. It might just be a confidence thing uh, I think that's half the battle when you're fishing. If you're confident with uh, the patterns you're using, you'll catch fish. It's that simple. But this has proved invaluable over the years. And to finish it off, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of resin onto the head, just to protect it. I mean, back when I was fishing this fly a lot, 
I just used Sally Hansen's hard as nails and that worked uh, just as well as this but this is just a little bit quicker uh, it's best fished on the point uh, I used to fish it in a team of three flies so five feet apart with uh, dial backs up from it so size 12 dial backs this on the point and uh, it was a great cast of flies that I always would put a few fish in the bag there we go thanks very much for watching if you haven't subscribed to the channel I would appreciate your support and I'll see you all next time